Hi, welcome to another edition of Family Matters. I'm Chloe Leary, the Executive Director of the Winston Prouty Center, and we are celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. So in honor of that, we are doing a series just focusing on the Prouty Center and different lives that we've touched over the years. And I'm very pleased that we have an alum of the Prouty Center. Alicia Underwood is here. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for coming and joining me. Um, and I'm especially excited because as much as, as many people uh, as we've sort of supported and served over the years, sometimes you lose track of people. Mm -hmm. So it's super exciting to find you yeah. <laughs> at a meeting because we kind of work together in the community. So exactly. it's actually pretty awesome. So. Um, Remind me, I'm trying to remember how it was that we figured out you were a Prouty alum. It was at a Building Bright Futures meeting. Mm -hmm. What happened? What was that? Um, there was a, an icebreaker of your first childhood memory. Oh, right. And mine happened to be at Winston Prouty Center. So oh, that's right. Was it sledding? Tell us what it was. So um, it was just little bits and pieces, but um, I remember there was a hill at the old Winston Prouty uh -huh. Center site um, on. Oak, Oak Street, Street. Yeah, Oak, Street. Oak and High Street. And there's this little hill on the back, and uh -huh. I just remember going up there. Um, I had a lot of muscular uh -huh. uh, issues, and so it was a challenge, but I just remember saying to myself, I can do this. So That's so great. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah, Oak Street. And so when was that? When, when did you go to Prouty? So um, I had, was two and a half years old. When I started, I did home visits. Okay. Um, I had a home-based care mm -hmm. until I was three, and then I went to Oak Street. Mm -hmm. I was born in 87, mm -hmm. so that was in 89. 89. Yeah. And how was it that you even got connected? Like, why did you get home visits in the first place? So, um, I had uh, velocardiofacial syndrome. Oh, my gosh. And <laughs> in, in, in simple terms, so, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, I just, I had a lot of muscular um, weakness. Okay. So, I couldn't hold my head oh. um, up straight. Uh -huh. I was, when um, the providers at Winston Prouty first met me, I, my head was on my shoulder. Oh my gosh. Um, I couldn't walk until I was about three. Oh, wow. And with the help of the home base, uh -huh. they helped me walk. Uh -huh. And I was 99% intolerable, so no one could understand me. Oh. Uh, through kindergarten, so I had uh, speech therapy uh -huh. yeah. all through elementary school uh -huh. until I had a partial cleft palate repaired in third grade. Oh, and that was the reason for being unintelligible. Yeah, Did that they know and muscle that? weakness. Uh -huh. but, yeah. Was that undiagnosed, the cleft palate issue? No. No, but no. it just took that. Like, you know. Yeah. I, child um, at, sorry, Boston Children's Hospital, uh -huh. they couldn't repair until I was old enough. Oh, okay. So. That's so great. Yeah. And, like, no one would have any idea <laughs> that, that you went through all of that as right. a child. Right, and everyone, I hear that all the time, mm -hmm. but um, I wouldn't have been able to go to mainstream school without... Winston uh -huh. Prouty Center. Uh -huh. oh. so. Do you know, I, I'm sure you don't remember because you were two and a half, but do you know <laughs> how you got connected? Like, how did you even know to come to the Prouty Center for help? Um, so my mom was connected with service at, as HCRS. Okay. And so she had a case manager. Yep. She was a single mom. Yep. And um, they connected us with early that, childhood yeah. development. That's so great to hear because I think a lot about how important it is we connect with community partners, mm -hmm. including BMH, what we'll, we'll talk about mm -hmm. your job later, but um, we work with HCRS now still and we work with early ed services and we work with lots of people, so it's mm -hmm. great to hear that that's actually been part of the history too. So, And my mom was connected with CCV and she took classes of uh -huh. early education because of the Prouty Center and because of what we went through. So, Oh my gosh, so it inspired yeah. her? To yeah. Oh my exactly. gosh. Exactly. <laughs> There's so many connections. Mm -hmm. That's so great. Yeah. So two and a half, you're getting services at home. What did that look mm -hmm. like? Like somebody, how often did somebody visit you? And I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, I'd have to ask my mom more. But um, all I know is for six months before um, I was, uh -huh. they were transitioning me into school-based mm -hmm. um, came and did home visits, did home visits. Uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, mm -hmm. and speech therapy. Mm -hmm. And so when you came to school base, were you there mm -hmm. every day, all day? Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. So it was I like had a, a I had a school bus come pick me up right outside of my house. Mm -hmm. My little brother, you know, was always waiting by the window for me. Uh -huh. And the bus driver, uh, who I'm actually still in contact with now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, she was also a para there, uh -huh. um, but I um, 
she still, you know, interacted okay. with my, my family uh -huh. and still knows my family really well. Uh -huh. So did you go, so you started at age three at the early, mm -hmm. or the school early learning center, and did you stay until kindergarten? Yes. Great. So two years yep. of Crowdy. Yep. That's great. Do you have any, you said you remember um, the hill and the playground. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember any teachers? Um, had, well, Dot, um, she's the one that I'm still in contact with. She uh -huh. did the bus oh, the, driver, the, the, she was okay. also a teacher. Um, I remember Diane, who helped me with my physical therapy. Uh -huh. um, Sally, who worked with me in the classroom. Uh -huh. um, and Emily. Emily. Yeah. So maybe we can, do you know, have, are you in touch with anybody besides Dot? Um, just Dot. Mm. You might have to work to track them down yeah. since you know their names. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. And what about kids? Do you remember any of the kids in the program? Well, um, it was beginning to be integration mm -hmm. um, with mainstream mm -hmm. and uh, with those with, with disabilities like myself. Mm -hmm. And so I remember a couple people when I just started, um, uh, one girl named Amanda, uh -huh. um, and I remember talking to her throughout um, my life, like throughout elementary school and, and high school. Uh -huh. And then um, one girl, who I became really good friends with named Amy. Uh -huh. um, she was towards the integration part. Uh -huh. And uh, we still be, we're still remain good friends. Uh -huh. yeah. That's great. When you say uh, towards the integration part, she was the more typically developing mm -hmm. kid. Huh? So, because yeah. um, it's funny, people's language around it. I think, you know, now, sometimes I even forget, um, you know, that uh, some people think that Western Proud only has kids with special needs, mm -hmm. even though that's, not yeah. the case since at least <laughs> 89. Right. Um, but, you know, just this idea of inclusion and everybody belonging no matter mm -hmm. what they have, I, I forget sometimes, like, how to how people talk about that. So right. sometimes I just like to check in. So yeah. what, what in, in addition, was there anything in addition to sort of the direct, so you mentioned PT and OT, was there anything else about Prouty that you remember um, that sort of helped, that worked for you or helped it be a successful experience? Like, when you, and again, I know you were young, so it's sort of um, maybe hard to think of, but was there anything, well, other things about the program that made it work? Yeah, well, my mom said she got a lot of support as a single parent, mm -hmm. um, and I just remember having just a lot of support and, and just feeling like, well, going into kindergarten, mm -hmm. you know, no one could really understand me, mm -hmm. but I was still able to develop friends. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was socially um, just more advanced because of the uh -huh. uh, Winston Prouty Center. Uh -huh. And um, I've, I've talked to my dad, too, and he, he said that, you know, if it wasn't for Winston Prouty Center, I would be a lot more isolated than uh -huh. I was. Mm -hmm. And um, That's yeah. That's a good story. That's good to know. And, you know, I think about um, what we know about early childhood, too, the mm -hmm. importance of, for all kids, regardless of where they are on the developmental spectrum, that social, emotional piece, those skills are so important as the foundation for mm -hmm. everything else. So no matter what you decide to do, if you don't sort of have that strong foundation, it can be a lot harder or more isolating or, yeah. you know, for anybody, like learning how to play nice or be mm -hmm. on a team or, you know, all those things. Right. So. But I had, you know, a lot of physical limitations, so mm -hmm. like, I could not walk mm -hmm. um, until I was, you know, well into three. Mm -hmm. So um, the physical therapy was really the major intervention, mm -hmm. um, and holding my head up, mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I had a lot of other um, health problems. Mm -hmm. I had a heart monitor, so there was just oh. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever, so did you use a wheelchair? Did you use a walker? Nope. Um, I remember having like braces. Okay. Um, and just, just assistance. Yeah. Yep. Do you, um, do you have any memories of, I think one of the things that happens and why isolation does happen if you don't have an integrated environment is sort of like if you don't know anybody mm -hmm. who's different or uses a wheelchair or has like braces then it's sort of a fear like mm -hmm. ah, you're different and strange do you right. have any memory of that or did it always feel like you belonged like do you know what I mean yeah I definitely felt that um mm -hmm. that I belonged um I had a little bit of um of it when I went into elementary school mm -hmm. because I had to be taken out for uh -huh. my therapies, but with Winston Prouty Center, it was right there oh, okay. in the classroom. So 
I didn't have to, I, d I wasn't really treated any differently uh -huh. um, because it was all there. Uh -huh. And so that was a little bit of a transition. Yeah, uh, but um, like I said, it was a much easier transition. Uh -huh. You know, I was still able to make friends. And, yeah. um, you know, the people that really knew me knew how to understand me. Um, I uh -huh. just, I breathed through my nose and my mouth at the same time, so it was really difficult to understand me. Uh -huh. um, but when I, you know, when I first got to Winston Prouty Center, you know, my mom had to hold me. Uh -huh. um, teachers had to help me um, until I could really build those muscles more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the, um, my kids actually went to Prouty also, mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I remember experiencing um, was them actually being able to appreciate having friends with differences. Mm -hmm. So the flip side of the question being, do you, do you remember realizing at any point or having friends tell you either at the time or being aware at the time or later, like, it was so great to have a friend like you who showed me that, I don't know, that the world, like, we're not all the same and that's right. okay. Well, my mom told me this one story of me and my brother because we, you know, we both had some significant challenges mm -hmm. and we were around others with significant challenges. Mm -hmm. um, through elementary school, I volunteered with the special education uh, uh, classroom mm -hmm. and I um, used my recess time and my um, gym time to be with their gym oh, class. Wow. So um, I had a buddy and um, uh -huh. so I was able to play with them during gym class and recess um, and then my mom told me the story of at the Brattleboro Rec Center uh -huh. at the Memorial Park mm -hmm. there was these races like this field day and um, there was one kid who fell and me and my brother both stopped what we were doing and went to that kid uh -huh. and I feel like because of Winston Prouty and mm -hmm. that was the culture of mm -hmm. just caring for one another mm -hmm. and we're all the same and that mm -hmm. kind of thing um, we stopped what we were doing and we went and helped the child. Oh, that's so great. So. And again, like that, um, that's what we hope for all our kids to learn no matter yeah, what. And so exactly. how do we create environments um, where, where kids learn that? Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. Did you grow up in Brattleboro? Like born, bred, raised, your whole family? I was born in Massachusetts, uh -huh. but my brother was born in Bennington and we moved to Brattleboro uh, like at two. Uh-huh. So. so you've been here as long as you yeah. know. Yeah. And which, where did you go to elementary school? Which school? Academy. Uh -huh. yeah. Have you been back at all, like, after? Well, with my current job, I've been, um, you know, working with the different elementary uh -huh. schools right. in the area. So um, mm. I've been speaking to some of the teachers that work there, but I have not been back yet, uh -huh. but I will be soon. Are there any teachers who are still there? That were um, there. That was pretty long time ago. I, I looked I online and there was I think um, Deb Hall is still there and uh -huh. she was my kindergarten teacher. Oh wow, <laughs> that's a, that's a great yeah. thing about growing up in a community too. I think is, um, you know, knowing people over a long time and mm -hmm. then and letting and seeing people grow and learn. So mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. Um, we are going to take a short commercial break and have a public service announcement, and we'll be back in a moment. Rise Vermont wants to know, what's your play? I'm Faith, and my play is running. I'm Alex, and my play is jump roping. I'm Jonathan, and my play is riding my bike. I'm Brian, and my play is frisbee. I'm Denise, and my play is walking my dog in the woods. Whatever your play is, Rise Vermont wants to celebrate it. Visit risevt.org to share your play and get inspiration for adding more play into your life. Welcome back to Family Matters. We're here with Alicia Underwood, who is a Prouty, Winston Prouty alum from 1989. Great year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should get sweatshirts or something <laughs> and try to recruit more people. Um, so we were talking about um, sort of growing up in the area and being here a long time and staying connected to people and um, sort of how that and how that you are um, sort of moved, you've chosen to stay here in your mm -hmm. career and your life. What, um, what did you end up doing after sort of elementary, high school, college, and what did that look like, and how did you sort of choose, how did you know what to do with your life? Sure. Um, so I, uh, I at first thought I was going to be a speech and language 
pathologist. For um, good reason. Yes. Fired, yeah. <laughs> and I went to Worcester State for a year mm -hmm. and um, pursued that as a major for a year, but then decided to move home um, due to just some struggles that I was having. Mm. And so um, that's when I went to Greenfield Community College mm -hmm. and I um, started taking a nutrition class and I was really into uh, food science mm. and nutrition um, and more prevention. Mm -hmm. So I transferred to Keene State College um, and I have my bachelor's degree first in my family. Um, thank you. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, first in my family to have a bachelor's degree and it's a bachelor's of science uh -huh. um, in health promotion and wellness. Uh -huh and a specialization in community health. Mm -hmm. So after college, I um, worked for HCRS for a little while mm -hmm. um, in their residential program. And then I went to BMH and I promoted the self-management programs, um, healthy living with chronic conditions, mm -hmm. um, diabetes prevention programs, uh, tobacco sensation programs, and I'm still a facilitator of those, mm -hmm. uh, but just recently, I transferred to uh, Rise Vermont. It's a new program here in Wyndham mm -hmm. County, and I'm the new program manager of that. And what, tell us about Rise Vermont. So Rise Vermont is a movement that started in Franklin County, Grand Isle, um, up north. And about five years ago, it was inspired by the EPODE model in Europe. Um, English, it stands for uh, Together, uh, we pre can prevent childhood obesity. Okay. But um, Rise Vermont kind of just molded that program and created our own where we're embracing healthier lifestyles uh -huh. and making easier choices, the health, or making healthy choices, easy choices. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, so we do have a grant program that uh, can help with um, really any existing program that needs additional funds mm -hmm. to keep going for to help prevent I mean to help promote mm -hmm. health and wellness mm -hmm. so we can work with school gardens mm -hmm. we can uh, work with food shelves inside the schools mm -hmm. um, we can work with community organizations to um, have events that promote health and social interactions um, I'm working, you know, with Winston Prouty and, and Building Bright Futures to just help make um, education around movement mm -hmm. and um, just proper nutrition mm -hmm. more well known. Is the focus, is it a, uh, in terms of age or demographic, what's the, what's the hope that group? You said childhood obesity was sort of the original group. Is there, mm -hmm. has that expanded or how did, what did Vermont do? With that? So, uh, Wyndham County is making healthy choices easy choices for all people focusing on children and families okay so Brattleboro memorial hospital has signed on mm -hmm. um and we together have um, chosen to focus on year one with communities of guilford vernon townsend and newfane mm -hmm. And we, in November, will, uh, through data collection, will expand. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, but we're starting small and working our way in uh, to help um, reach all of Wyndham County. Great. Yeah. And do you, I've just noticed that, you know, you, you thought about when you first went to college being a speech and language mm -hmm. pathologist, wanting to, um, I, I sort of made the connection in my head, I'm checking it with you about, wow, if people helped me when I was little, I want to do something that's going to help people the same way. Yeah. And so it sounds like maybe that wasn't a great fit, but you found this other thing mm -hmm. that really helps you channel that energy about helping people from, yeah. from the same experience, maybe. Or. I mean, this is why I chose to stay in Brattleboro, um, to really help the community, because it really does take a village. and. Mm -hmm. My mom really said that I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for Winston Prouty and if it wasn't for Brattleboro community as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, we were really integrated in a lot of programs mm -hmm. that helped us. Mm -hmm. um, so I, with community health, really wanted to um, mm -hmm. be part of that and yeah. keep that going. 
Well, and I, and I get, so that when I think of early intervention, so the, the services that you received, what that looks like now mm -hmm. is early intervention, is what mm -hmm. it's called. It used to be called Family Infant Toddler Program. Yeah. So now it's um, Children's Integrated Services, mm -hmm. integrated, I'll just note the word. Um, and so early intervention is for children zero to three who are um, born with a developmental delay, have a condition that might lead to a developmental delay, or are at risk for one. So mm -hmm. it sounds like you were born with a diagnosed condition that made you eligible for early intervention. Yep. So that's how you, and actually a lot of people don't know this, um, it's a federal program and it's an entitlement program. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like um, early special education. It's required for every state to have a program to support kids zero to three um, to do this. So um, right now, actually in the time, I don't know how many kids we supported literally through that program, mm -hmm. but somebody, um, we have like on average 65 to 70 families a month. Like they, you know, they're different at different times. Mm -hmm. Like that many families that we support through that program. So that's great. But, um, I love, when I think of the title early intervention, it really conveys kind of what you're talking about, like the prevent, the idea that if we can prevent or get more upstream mm -hmm. for things, so community health team or rise or run, sounds like let's not wait until things get hard or bad, let's try to, um, you know, do it earlier. Right, and we're just changing the culture to think more healthy, mm -hmm. um, increasing physical activity, uh, more education around uh, variety of foods and healthy foods um, and stress management and tobacco use prevention mm -hmm. so and those are you know uh, I, I will say that sometimes we all know what to do like we know what's not good to eat and what's mm -hmm. good to eat so what are um, some of the barriers that get in the way of people doing what we know is the healthy okay. thing to do like what's your um, access um, access to healthy foods um, just knowing that um, the education around processed foods, mm -hmm. um, you know, the label can be really misleading. Mm. The food label can be, it can say natural, and that may have, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of processed chemicals in it that mm -hmm. you just don't think about. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're doing this um, event this Friday oh. with Month of the Young Child. Oh, okay. Um, and, it is in Guilford, Vermont, um, at the Guilford Central School. And we're going to read a book called Chicks and Salsa. And it, we're going to make guacamole. Uh -huh. um, and then we're going to serve it at the Senior Meals Program. Uh, we're also going to have uh, seedlings um, and plant cilantro, mm -hmm. um, tomatoes, and onions, um, and learn how to reuse an avocado pit. Um, uh -huh. And then we're going to taste test with the senior meals. That's so so fun. Um, it just Great. makes, you know, just a little natural um, taste testing, mm -hmm. easy ingredient um, dish mm -hmm. and promoting it with families and seniors. Mm -hmm. Which is also great around community building. Mm -hmm. We think about opportunities to connect across generations. So in early childhood, I don't, you know, I'd be curious um, when you think about where. Um, we have the most impact or the most chance to make mm -hmm. a difference. I didn't actually plan on getting an early childhood in my career, but now that I'm here, I sort of see how, um, you know, if we get it right early on, or not right, I don't know if there's right and wrong, but if we do these kinds of things early mm -hmm. on, um, it sort of builds the capacity, similar to maybe the experience you had, like building capacity when you're young mm -hmm. to be able to um, successfully participate. So, um, and I, you know, it's interesting, you had, um, Rise Vermont is focusing on um, families and children. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things we say in early childhood is really don't, don't get into early childhood because you like kids, because mm -hmm. you have to like the grown-ups too, because all kids yeah. are part of their families, I think, for our whole lives, but really in early childhood, you can't really, you know, you can't, it's such a partnership. Right. And it sounds like your mom experienced that too, yes. which is great. Do you, um, in this event you just described, sounds like, uh, pretty intentionally around, how, you know, what are some intentional ways or, or ways that you see most successful to invite families and kids together to do to do this kind of work? Yeah, so we have a lot of pop-up events, um, working with existing partnerships and organizations like uh, Community Collaborations for Guilford, mm -hmm. CC4G, mm -hmm. um, and Guilford Cares. So working with them and doing these events um, that involves multi-generations and just social interactions um, and a, you know, a interactive 
uh, program with, you know, um, some practice uh, and modeling, some mm -hmm. role modeling. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that is really what encompasses RISE, it's just proper mo role modeling and um, integrating with uh, other organizations. Mm -hmm. So it's a collective mm -hmm. impact model. Mm -hmm. um, and in Townsend, there's the Community Hope and Action Committee, and they do an event every, every month mm -hmm. um, for the community. So I'm partnering with them and doing just making more healthy mm -hmm. um, programs available. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say that what strikes me about your current work and then your experience at Winston Proud and sort of acknowledging the, the foundation mm -hmm. that it, there are so many threads that connect, like um, the integrated piece. So you were talking about how you got connected to Proud in the first place, and the more people know about what exists in our community, the more we can help people mm -hmm. access it, because yep. access is a challenge. Um, and then also, so the integration and the collaboration and not um, sort of the, that holistic piece is so important. And education, that's the mm -hmm. other thing I was thinking of, that you said you're the first person in your family to get a <laughs> bachelor's degree. So how important education is at all levels. Mm -hmm. So Rise Vermont sort of about education too, right? Yeah. So all these threads seem to be kind of helping people. Like I'm mm -hmm. really struck by your story of, um, you know, how all of that sort of a continuum. And you can see how you got to where you are mm -hmm. based on where you came from. So yeah. what are you most excited about in your work? Um, just working with families and giving them something to look forward to um, and you know working with these programs and help um, sustaining them mm -hmm. so there's just these wonderful organizations like Winston Prouty Center um, that I'm just really excited about mm. doing a school garden together or doing an event together mm -hmm. that can really benefit mm -hmm. our communities. And um, what do you do to take care of yourself and keep yourself healthy? So I like to walk. Um, I love the West River Trail. Mm. And I go there with my dog. He's an 11 year old Shih Tzu. <laughs> and I go there with my mom. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I love walking. I love kayaking and uh -huh. hiking. Nice. Yep. That's great. Mm -hmm. And one more question, because we have a few, a little bit more time. What do you feel like the greatest strength you bring to your work? And so I asked you what you're excited about. But mm -hmm. what, what's your like, what, your core value around it, or what's your core strength that you're bringing? So um, really, my philosophy in life is just help providing tools um, to others that can help, that can empower them to mm -hmm. help themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the self management programs, you know, we can't do the work for you. Mm -hmm. um, we can't, you know stock these families' fridges for them, but we can empower them to make healthy choices and help making those choices easy mm -hmm. and accessible. Mm -hmm. So, um, Which I'll just bring yeah. us back around to. You had to get yourself up that hill. I did. I was in front of you, and you did, because you yeah. had the support you needed and the mm -hmm. help you needed. So exactly. Just to tie it all back together. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I feel like we scripted that. <laughs> 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 good. But, you know, I put myself through college, and everything that hasn't come easy to me, yeah. you know, walking from a young age, talking, right. Right. Um, and it took me seven years to get that bachelor's degree, but in my whole family, I did it, did. so. That's great, yeah. very inspiring. Thanks. And we're out of time, Okay. so thank you so much. Thanks for joining us at Family Matters, and we'll see you again next time.